So in this video, we'll be continuing on the theme of proportion with a focus on working with recipes. Now, a common question that relates to proportion is when you're given a recipe or part of a recipe containing the amount of ingredients needed for a certain amount of people and required to find the amounts needed for a different quantity of people. Now, like most proportion questions, the method is generally the same. So here what you want to do is find the amount needed for one person and then multiply it by the amount of people that it's now intended for. Or alternately, for more non-calculated methods, you can find a number that you can either divide if you're going small of catering for smaller or multiply if you're catering for more, the number of people the recipe is intended for in the original recipe to get the amount of people that you are now catering for. Now these questions can appear on both the non and calculated paper in exams and tests. So let's go straight into a couple of examples. So in this particular question, we've got the ingredients for to make macaroni and cheese for four people. Now the key instance in this is not quite what you're actually making or what the recipe is for, it's actually for how many people that we're actually cooking for in this particular initial recipe. Now the question is asking for how much of each ingredient is needed to make macaroni cheese for, and then we've got four different types of numbers that we then need to manipulate this for. Now with question A, what you want is you want to try and get from four people, which is the original recipe, to eight people. Now when you're dealing with proportion, you can only multiply or divide. You can't add or subtract. So what you want to try and do is think of a number that you can multiply 4 or divide by to get 8. So here we know that we can just multiply by 2. So for A, all I need to do is multiply each of these ingredients by 2 and therefore I will have the recipe for 8 people. So here I'm going to have macaroni which is going to be 120 times 2 which is 240 grams. Again, try not to forget the uh, units. Then we've got cheese, which is going to be 72 times 2, which is going to give me 144 grams. And then I've got flour, which is going to be 30 times 2, which is 60 grams. And then finally, I've got milk, oh, milk, which is 850 times 2, which gives me 1700 milliliters. And there is my final answer. Now, for B, again, what we want to try and do is we want to try and get from 4 to 10. So, again, there's a couple of ways in which you can do this, but I would say typically when you're dealing with portion, well, to find the recipe for one person, I'm going to divide by four, and that will always give me, and again, to find the value of one person, all I need to do is just divide by how many people the recipe is for, and then I multiply it by the number that I'm wanting it. So here I'm wanting 10 people, so I'm going to multiply it by 10. And so what I then need to do is do these two calculations on each of the ingredients. So again, for macaroni, What I'm going to do is I've got 120, I'm going to divide it by 4 and then times the answer by 10. So again, with this typically would be on a calculator paper. So I've got 120 divided by 4 times 10 and that gives me an answer of 300 grams. Then for cheese, I've got 72 and again I'm going to divide by 4 times by 10. So I've got 72 divided by 4 times 10 gives me 180. And then for flour, I've got 30 divided by 4 times by 10. And that gives me 75 grams. And then for milk, I've got 850 divided by 4 times 10, which gives me an answer of 2,125 millilitres, or I can convert that into litres, so it's 1.125 litres, and there are my final answer for B. Now moving on to question C, we're going to follow the same format. So for question C, all we're going to do for each ingredient, we're going to divide by 4 and multiply by 3. So what you should have for this is for macaroni 
we're going to have 120 divided by 4 times by 3, which gives me 90 grams. For cheese, I'm going to do 72 divided by 4 times 3, which gives me an answer of 54 grams. And for flour, I've got 30, and I'm going to divide that by 4, multiply that by 3, and I get an answer of 22.5 grams or you could write 22 and a half that's absolutely fine and for milk we're going to do 850 divided by 4 times by 3 and type that into your calculator gives you 637.5 and that's in milliliters and then finally moving on to question d again for here we've got seven people so what we're going to do is we're going to divide by four to work out how many we need for one person and then times by seven so for the macaroni i'm going to do 120 divided by four times seven which gives me an answer of 210 grams and then for the cheese we're going to do 72 divided by four times by seven which gives me an answer of 126 grams and then for the flour i'm going to do 30 divided by four times by seven which gives me 52.5 grams. And then finally, for the milk, I'm going to do 850 divided by 4 times by 7, which gives me 1,457.5 milliliters. Or you can write it in liters, but I probably wouldn't recommend it because your final answer in liters would be 1.4575 liters. But I personally would leave it in milliliters. Now, working with question two, um, now again, it's exactly the same. Um, so here we're looking at a recipe representing scones. So here it's intended for 12 people and we want 36. Now for A, if you imagine that we've got 12 and we've got 36. Now, one of your general rules of thumb should be to always think, to make your life a little bit easier, is think to yourself, okay, well, I could divide by 12 and times by 36. But again, that's going to incorporate long division. Uh, particularly when looking at the ingredients, you can see that we've got some fractions and we've got some quite big numbers. So divided by 12, not going to be the best. So with this, if you can try and be a bit smart and think to yourself, OK, well, this, what do I need to multiply 12 to get 36? Well, if I just times that by 3, you might find it a lot easier to then work with the ingredients that you've got. So for example, with A, so for the flour, all I need to do is times by 3. And then for the butter, so that should be easy if I just do this. So just times these by three. And I will get the answers. So from this, as you can see on your screen, what we've got is all the amounts needed for 36 people. Now, again, when you work with fractions, again, it's you may find it easier to work with decimals. So, for example, with the teaspoon, tablespoons of caster sugar, we've got one and a half. So we could change that to 1.5 and then times by three. And again, if you're struggling with multiplying with decimals, try and think of it as money. But obviously don't have your ingredients in pounds because that's not going to work. And also a bit of a health hazard uh, and also the units as well. So, again, if you're not too sure what the abbreviations are for tablespoons or teaspoons, then just write the, the, the units in its full list. Um, like I said, you might not get any marks for, you might not lose any marks for particular ingredients of this, but again, it's entirely up to you or the mark scheme of your um, question. Now, for the next one, we've got eight. So to get from 12 to eight, again, with this, there's several ways in which we can do this. So for example, to get from 12 to eight, we can divide by 12 and times by eight. We could, in fact, divide by three which would give us four and then times by two. So again, there's so many different options you could do to work this out. We could also divide by six, which gives us two and then times by four. So any of these groupings would be absolutely fine that we could use to work out the recipe for eight people going from 12 to eight. And again, it's entirely up to you which method you choose. But again, with looking at the ingredients and the amount of ingredients, I would say this probably would appear on a calculator paper. So again, any of these three things that you do would probably be the best option. I would say number one is probably the easiest if you're doing it on a calculator. If it's non-calculator, looking at the ingredients, um, 
it, it really does depend on which out of the three you want to go for. Um, but definitely with a calculator, just to keep the method consistent, I would go for divide by 12 to get one person and then times it by the number of people that you want. So as if by magic, you can see that we've got the answers that we should have. So again, all I've done here is divided each of the ingredients in the original recipe, divided by 12, time, multiplied the answer by eight, and I've got the following answers. So let's now move on to our third example. So again, it's pretty worded a little bit different. So it says here is a recipe for making 150 milliliters of parsnip soup. And again, we've got our ingredients. Now the question's asking, work out the amount of each ingredient needed to make 2,500 milliliters of soup. Now, another way of writing this would be 2.5 liters of soup. But again, you just need to work with your unit conversions to make sure that you are knowing what it is. Now, in this particular question, there's no mention of people. Okay, so imagine that we don't really know, but we do know the quantity. So what I need to do is I need to go from 1,500 to 2,500. Now, the method is exactly the same. So what we're going to do here and again, I would say this probably may appear on the calculator paper, is we divide by 1,500, try and get this number equal to 1. Now let me just get a different colour pen to make this equal equal to 1. And then I multiply it by whatever this number is. So it's going to be times 2,500. So these are the two instructions that I need to do to each of those ingredients to get the quantity that I need for to make that amount of soup. Now, another alternative you could do is recognizing, well, okay, well, I know that 1,500 and 2,500 are all in like multiples of 500. So to get from this to this, well, if I divide by three, then that would give me 500. So from 500, what do you need to multiply 500 to get 2,500? Well, that will be to times by five. So another alternative would be to use these two numbers. Now, if you can think like that, you can see how it's going to be a whole lot easier dividing these numbers by three and then multiplying by five, then dividing by 1,500 and two, then multiplying by 2,500, particularly if it's non-calculator. So if it's non-calculator, I would go for the green method. If it's calculator, again, I would still probably opt for the green method. But like I said, in terms of the general method of trying to find one and then multiplying it by the number that you need, then that is going to be absolutely fine. So the answer you should have is for parsnip, you should have 750 grams, leeks should be 500 grams, apples is 250 grams, onions is five onions, and chicken stock should be 2.5 or two and a half pints. Now, again, with these particular questions, you kind of want to use your common sense. So we're going, we're starting with 1500 and we're wanting want 2500. So you expect the ingredients to increase by just, uh, just under half. So when you're looking at your answers, your answer should be less than double of each of those ingredients. So here, look at onions. We've got three to five, double three, you get six. So five is pretty close to six and just under. So that looks absolutely fine. Now, as I've talked about, if you were to divide by 1500 and times by 2500, although you're working with much bigger numbers, you should still get the same answer. So again, if you've used that method, then again, um, the answers should be correct to the ones that you can see in yellow on your screens. So moving on to this fourth example. Now this one is a little bit different to the previous examples. So it's really important that you read the question carefully and you understand what it is they're actually asking for. So in question four, it says we're given the recipe of apple crumble for four people. So again, it's always good and worth highlighting the key bits of information, which is four people. And we've got our list of ingredients for those four people to make the apple crumble. Now, question eight says that Tamsin has 870 grams of sugar and unlimited supply of all the other ingredients. What is the maximum number of people she can cater for and also how much of each other ingredient is needed? So for this, what we're needing to work out is how much sugar is needed for one person. Now to work this out, all I need to do is do the amount of sugar, which is 90, divided by four, because there's four people, and that gives me 22.5 grams per person. So from this, what I now need to do is how many 22.5s go into 870? So 870 
divided by 22.5 and if I type that into my calculator I get an answer of 38.6 recurring people. So the answer to this particular question will be the maximum people would be 38 because I always want to round down because you can't have 0.6 of a person. Now the next part of this particular question says how much of each of the other ingredients is needed without having to rub out the actual question. So for this what I'm needing to do is work out how much of each of the other ingredients I need for 38 people. So what I need to do for each of these other numbers, so if I just highlight the numbers that I don't know, so it's the plain flour, the ground almonds, the butter and the apples and what I need to do for this is divide by 4 because that's how many people it's for and then times each ingredient by 38. So if I actually go about doing that, so here if I just write PF for plain flour, that's going to be 80 divided by 4 multiplied by 38. And again, if I work that out on my calculator, that's going to give me 80 divided by 4 times 38 gives me an answer of 760 grams of plain flour. For the almonds, I need to do exactly the same. So we just write A L. I want to spell almonds. So here I'm going to do 60 divided by 4 times by 38 equals so 60 divided by 4 times 38 gives me an answer of 570. And then for the butter, it's going to be 60 or it's actually going to be the same as the almonds so that's going to be 570 grams and then finally for the apples it's going to be 4 divided by 4 times 38 which equals 38 apples and there is my final answer so again it's really important that you read the questions that carefully so plain flour is 760 almonds is 570 grams butter is going to be the same and the apples is 38 for that particular question. Now the next question in terms of question B, it says how much butter is needed to make apple crumble for 25 people? So again, what I'm gonna do is just get rid of all of this labeling for part A. And what we're looking at is the sugar of the butter. So the butter is 60. So what again, what I need to do here is do 60 divided by four to work out how much butter is needed for one person. So it's 15 grams per person. And then to work out the final answer, all I then need to do is 15 times 25, which gives me an answer of 375 grams. And then moving on to my last question, it says Leecham has the following ingredients. What is the maximum number of people he can make apple crumble for? So again, what I need to do is work out the ingredients needed per person. So what I need to do is for one person, What I then need to do is, so let me just go back. So going back to our original list is I need to work out how much ingredients is needed for one person. So to do this, all I need to do is divide each of these ingredients by four. I don't know why I wrote two. So let's just correct that. So divide each of these numbers by four. So 80 divided by four is 20 grams. That's going to be 15 grams. That's going to be uh, 22.5 grams. That's going to be 15 grams. And this is going to be one apple. So these are the ingredients needed for one person. So what I then need to do to each of these numbers, which I've got in C, is divide each of these numbers by the answers that I've got in this list for one person. So if I divide that by 20, I'm going to divide this number by 15. I'm going to divide this number by 22.5. I don't know why I went a bit crazy with the twos there. 22.5. I'm going to divide this number by 15. I'm going to divide this number by, 30, uh, by 1. So looking at the answers to each of these calculations, then what I get is I get 
96, 960 divided by 20 is 48, so that will cater for 48 people. 750 divided by 15 is 50. 1.2 kilograms now the problem is, is that what I need to recognize is that the sugar it's given to me in grams so what I need to do with this is convert this into grams first so it's 100 1200 divided by 22.5 which gives me an answer of 53.3 people which is roughly going to be 53 people because always round down when it's dealing with people and then 820 divided by 15 is 54.6 recurring people, which again would be 54, and that's going to be 38 people. Now, although it says the maximum number of people, what I've got to go for is the smallest number that's in this list here. So the smallest number in this list is going to be 38. So the final answer for this question is going to be the 38 people because again going back to this if I look at the biggest number which was butter and that was 54 people well although I've got enough butter to make uh, apple crumble for 54 people I don't have enough of the other ingredients to make it for that amount of people so for 38 is going to be my final answer now I will put some practice questions in a worksheet and I'll attach that in the description below along with their answers for you to check your work and to make sure that you are getting these questions correct.